Hi, this is Monday, December the 2nd. The market makers are back at the desk in London. It's about uh, 9 a.m. in London. And this, what you're seeing now is my baby rhino. I made an exception to my usual rule, that is to close my trades on Fridays and reopen a new one. Friday was a, a short day, and because the, the trade was not doing so well, I thought I could do with extra theta over the weekend to let it recover. The Greeks are okay. Um, I allow the trade to exceed my usual Vega theta ratio. This is a bit unusual and I suppose that now it's a matter of getting close to break even so the theta is still okay. It can't be as good as under the broken butterfly but that should be okay. So I am looking at closing it shortly after the open. I've seen that there's another upward gap on SPX, so the market is going to be bullish again. But I do hope that the, the Vega effect on those calendars will not. It's going to be uh, quite acceptable at run, around minus 1%. So that should be okay. Now let's move on to SPX. So this is SPX, and we first have a look at Jan Reg. Jan rig is safe enough even though the market is still pushing and I mean there is a, a resistance on 31.65, the, the bigger one around 31.90 and the question is when is it going to consolidate? There are several ways to deal with this. The simplest is just to look that we are losing a maximum of $600 and we have about 5 here so we could just do an RH and wait. I mean, this is as simple as that. We're not using much capital. We would be adding about two. That's the simplest way to deal with it. We would still have a slightly negative delta. Vega would, of course, be larger, but it's not exactly a trend smash. And we would still have a sufficient cover for about 100 points. So really, this is a typical way on the classical B2B trade and there's nothing wrong with doing the same on, on the regular trade. We don't necessarily have to be creative just because it's a, a more flexible trade. Of course, the other possibility is just to repeat something we've done before, which is a small upside broken butterfly uh, costing next to nothing and adding some theta closer to the money. I mean, we should be paying little, maybe I don't think we would get a credit here. Now we pay about 70 cents for it. This is normal. Volatility is low and volatil volatility is quite low. So we could definitely do something like that. It's still a reasonable price. And I repeat something that I have said on recent videos. When volatility drops, if you use broken wing but butterfly combos or even straight butterflies, just reduce your wing size. I mean, this is some some traders, inexperienced traders, think that well, if you use a, a localized, narrow structure, it will be uh, passed through quickly. Yes, it's possible. And if if the market drops, I mean, this broken butterfly will lose money. But it's still, and maybe if we just look at the adjustment itself, if we look at this, yeah, I mean, we would be losing for sure. We would losing a bit. Or on about 50, uh, if the market drops like 50 points. I mean, even though I always say when you learn, if you le learn to trade um, sophisticated strategies, you should be able to really study, analyze the behavior of each of your adjustments. That said, of course, it's the bigger picture looks okay. And this trade, if, even if the market would drop about 100 points, we would be losing not that much, you know. And we have a lot of support from 3020, 3060. So this this would be safe enough. It would add some theta. It does not really rock the boat in terms of vague exposure. That is something that we can consider. That said, uh, am I inclined towards this? Maybe not. Simplicity is usually best. So I think I'll go for a reverse Harvey possibly with, with some capital control on the lower put side. That can be done. Or maybe, again, because if you remember, last time I placed one, I was actually placing it safer. It 
where it's, I think, just 25 points under under the money. I mean, of course, if you do that, you will have a credit. You will you will have actually a lot of credit because we, we would have absolutely no upside loss. Would I be happy about going delta positive and really um, giving it a lot of vega? I would, I would definitely need to be more bullish uh, or at least be confident that the market will not drop below the strong support area 3090, 3060 and 3020 um, for at least a week or two to actually restore some negative delta. So it is a little bit too bullish biased for my liking but this is something that we can consider and if you don't want and I personally don't really want want to go for a positive delta you can always go for a, a, a structure like this this one should actually cost less than 70 cents maybe very close to zero yeah 20 cents we have now a panel of possible adjustments or layers uh, the first adjustment is the reverse RV and the le localized layer type of adjustment would be a narrow broken butterfly um, at this point, as you have seen in the past, it is also possible to go for a wide and condor. That's, that's also a possibility, although it would add too much vega uh, at this point, and, and, and I would be a little bit concerned because of volatility being very low at the moment. That said, on Friday it picked up a bit. Friday was a bit of an odd day, so I'm not sure whether we can really uh, look at it too seriously. So um, if I was to go for uh, a wide hand condor and a, and a sizable addition on the Vega side, I would wait to see volatility pop back to more uh, normal levels. So that's, that's what I am looking at for the regular trade. For the B2B trade, which is Losing $500, it's actually now close to its maximum loss, uh, which is about 650. There, we we don't have much of a choice in terms of adjustment. It's basically going to be an adjustment like this. We do flatten delta; it stays negative. It had already a little bit more negative Vega, so the the, the addition to Vega is not too bad. It's quite common to lose theta on a, re a reverse RV, and this time it is fairly stable. So again, we keep things simple, and this trade is actually okay. With the credit, we would improve the uh, potential upside loss to like $200. Of course, again, this, is, this one has got more Vega, and this trade would probably suffer a bit more in terms of a sudden surge of volatility. Uh, however, th this trade is still quite safe for 100 or maybe 150 points. So this is um, safe enough to do a short condor on this trade. Right, maybe we can have a look at the December trades which were closed um, sometime last week. But this was the December regular. I think I closed on Wednesday on the 27th. Yes, so nothing really happened so this is what the trade was looking like on the 26th and maybe I can go one more day yeah December was still on so I closed it because there was really nothing to uh, squeeze out of this trade um, I made about 1300 or 1310 this, this trade was safe and really there was no point fighting for a, a few extra dollars so this this is how it looked just before I closed it and I closed December also and if you if you look at the way I close trades uh, remember that I, unless you close everything in one go because you, you have uh, only a few strikes and it's, it's it's easy if you want to close your trade more gradually even if you're going to pay a few dollars here or there I always recommend that you keep your Greeks in good shape while closing unless you can really close your trade in one go and that's not always easy when the vo volumes are low and you've got a funny shape in terms of combos so the market makers are not too interested so simplify your trade and keep your Greeks in a good balance while you close the trade right that's it for now this week 
Uh, we will be looking at entering February uh, towards the end of the week. Um, with the market going up and volatility being very low, there's a chance that I'm, I am going to uh, either delay the entry or go for a lighter entry. I've done that in the past, so sometimes you enter just one broken butterfly or two broken butterflies just to get skin in the game. Or you can go with an, a normal uh, entry size of three broken butterflies, but with narrow wings. So I will be looking at maybe going for a 75 slash 50 wing size broken butterfly instead of the regular 100 slash 75, which is generally more stable and easier to manage when volatility is average to above average. Okay, guys, I'll be around at the open as usual, um, if only to close the baby rhino, and I'll see whether I go for that reverse Harvey or something slightly more sophisticated on the January trade. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.